Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. Quite a while back now I tried to make a original Xbox and a Dreamcast version of my cover taped Chaos series for the C64 called Cover Disc Chaos. Um, I, I did one ep episode of each console but I wasn't entirely happy on how it turned out. Um, what I was doing is I was playing the, the game, the demos um, and watching the videos on the discs live uh, while trying to talk over them at the same time and um, the the audio quality of, m of the microphone I was trying to use was terrible it was a little um, lanyard lapel mic thing um, which wasn't working properly anyway and, um, and uh, yeah so um, the you could barely hear what I was saying for half of it and it wasn't very interesting either because I, I was um, struggling to think of things to say as I was playing live. So what I have done for this um, PlayStation 2 experiment that I'm trying is I have already played through the um, playable demos and captured the footage um, and uh, now I'm just going to play it back and talk over it and um, if I if I need to I can skip around skip over any boring parts of the um, footage I think there's about 40 minutes of the, the two playable games but this video won't necessarily be that long I'll um, probably um, skip through bits a little bit and um, what I'm doing is going to split each disc into two parts uh, part one will be the playable demos and part two will be the um, just the videos of upcoming games and there might be part three sometimes if there are special features like one of the issues has got a whole series of videos about Gran the making Gran Turismo and another one's got the making of Metal Gear Solid or something uh, something similar to that anyway no and uh, yeah one of the Xbox videos has got the making of Halo so yeah, for that sort of thing, they might get their own part, but I wouldn't talk over that necessarily, because it might be interesting to hear what the um, people have got to say. But anyway, I'm going to press play now. This is the the video here um, in on this monitor, and um, yeah, this was the menu, and there were just two games on this particular issue. This was number six. Um, another reason I've put off doing this for so long, other than like. I didn't like how the other ones turned out. Is that um, I don't have all the um, all the demo discs. So six is the first one I had, and I was sort of holding out on, in the hope that um, I would be able to find one to five on eBay or something. But uh, no, it's 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 just a bit of a pain to source the um, other the, the first issues. So I'm just going to start with what I've got. Um, and if anyone sees this and they have just got the other issues lying around and they want to send them to me, then um, let me know and we can work something out. I'll, I'll probably give you a little bit of money for them or work out a trade of some some kind. But yeah, I would like to be able to get the other um, other missing discs. I I might draw up a spreadsheet or something and so people can look at it and see which discs I haven't haven't got so that I just don't keep getting the same ones over and over but um, yeah I've got gaps in my PS2 demo disc collection and my um, official Xbox demo disc collection and I, and I haven't got any of the official Dreamcast discs when I did that um, video for the, the first match. Dreamcast um, demo disc I, it was a burnt copy and that's another reason why it didn't work so well because um, the, the sound files were messed up in the, the burning process so yeah if I can um, get hold of the, the rest of those then that would be great but let's talk about the the first game in question and this is um, of course Dead or Alive 2 um, and um, I owned this game briefly on the Dreamcast and I think it is more or, se more or less essentially the same game on the PlayStation 2. It might look slightly better, um, but um, yeah, um, I played it for a while on the um, on the Dreamcast, but eventually got bored of it because 
I, I, I never played it with anyone. It was just I just played it by myself. And um, it compared to the likes of Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast and um, other games of that nature, like Tekken on other place, or other platforms. It was a bit lacking in features. Um, the story mode was is quite brief. There's not much to it. Um, but um, for a pretty early um, Dreamcast game, and a, a not not too um, not terribly rate, late uh, PS2 game either, uh, it looks really good. Uh, that's one of the um, kind of um, driving factors of, of the DOA series, no matter what platform they've been on. They've always looked really good, I think, and uh, of course they're notorious for the the TNA that's on display um, of the the the, the boob physics. Um, on I, th I think on the first game on the PlayStation there was actually an age slider for you. Um, so uh, the older you said you were, the more jiggly the the boobs got, which was a bit weird. But um, anyway, um, yes, this. PS2 uh, version of the DOA 2 uh, features quite a lot of characters and, and in terms of a demo this is actually pretty generous because I think you get to play as um, six of the characters and you can you um, can play um, three or four fights from each character in a shortened version of the, the story mode and it also has the um, um, multiplayer mode to mess around with as well so um, it actually gives you a decent chunk of stuff to, to mess, mess around with for free oh it's only four characters sorry my bad and I've I played as um, each of the women individually um, and then I played the tag mode as the two blokes so you've seen already seen um, what was her name I can't remember now um, but this is Lai, Lai Fang versus Lin, and uh, of course an, another um, gameplay gimmick that DOA has over other games, uh, which I think was introduced in DOA too, is the multi multiple level stages. Um, you might see that. Uh, I think you do see that on one of the IC stages when I get to it, and that is um, when one of the players knocks the other one off. Um, then they they both the other one jumps down after them and they, they carry on fighting on the another level which was is quite cool and they um, developed that further in DOA three and four and five probably but I haven't really messed around with four and five that much but um, yeah I um, I think this is a fairly well regarded um, game really but. Um, for me, um, the DLA series has never been quite on the same level as Tekken and Soul Calibur. Um, I do prefer these sort of easier to get into fast paced um, fighting games um, as opposed to the technical stuff like the Virtua Fighter games, but um, this one was a bit too thin um, in the story mode. Um, by this point, we'd already had quite um, extensive story modes in stuff like Soul Calibur and Street Fighter Alpha 3 on the, on the PlayStation. That was another one that had a really good story mode. So this was more, although it called itself story mode, it was more just a, your standard sort of arcade mode, really, where there was the occasional cutscene of um, characters talking to each other. Other than that, it didn't really do anything out of the ordinary. So um, let's see how long have I been talking? About nine minutes but um, I was waffling quite a bit at the start. But let's skip ahead in the video a little bit and, and find the, the tag match. Um, oh no I've skipped too far. Here, here we go. Um, so this was me tr as Zack and the other guy trying to fight Ayani and Kasumi, but I, I got my ass handed to me. I think that might be the end of the fight already there. Did I try again? No, I didn't. Okay, anyway, I think we've seen enough um, DOA 2 really. So yeah, this is the other demo on this particular um, 
disc and it is um, Zone of the Enders um, and um, I think I did play this demo um, this was probably my first encounter with this game and I would have been quite impressed um, of course um, it's off the back of um, Metal Gear Solid by this point Metal Gear Solid 2 hadn't come out yet um, and our first sort of playable taste of Metal Gear Solid 2 was actually on a demo that came with Zone of the Enders 1 um, and um, I remember um, it was the game had been out for six or so months um, that's um, Zone of the Enders that is and um, it had dropped in price there was a, a somewhere was having a sale of it probably um, whatever the v version of game was back in the day it was either game station or it might have been electronics boutique that far back but anyway um, they was they were selling it for about 15 quid which was a, a lot cheaper than it, it was first on sale for and for that price I decided to buy the game and, and um, give it a chance and I um, I wanted to let people know online that um, they could get it for cheap so I posted in a forum that I, I bought it and I was enjoying it and what I got back was a load of snarky comments about how I only bought it to, for the PlayStation 2 demo and, and, and how it was a shitty game and, and stuff like that but um, no, I I didn't buy it buy it for the MGS2 demo. I was going to buy MGS2 anyway, so I didn't really care about the demo. Although I did play it and enjoy it, um, I enjoyed Zone of the Enders one uh, on its own merits. Um, and we haven't actually got to the gameplay part yet. I'm going to skip through. I think there's quite a lot of tutorial, so I'm just going to skip ahead past the movement tutorial a little bit uh, I think we might be into the game proper now there's a bit more tutorial later on but I might just let that play out but anyway um, yes um, the it, it was a really good game the story is good the graphics are really good the, the design of the mechs um, by um, the same person who designed the, the Metal Gear um, in MGS2 and is it Yoji Shinkawa I think that's his name but yeah he's very good at designing um, mechs and, and robots so um, yeah that was all good um, the only thing that um, let the game down a little bit is it started to get pretty repetitive um, most fights you could get through by um, mashing the buttons quite a lot and there weren't that many en enemy types in this first game so um, it got um, yeah it got a little little bit samey towards the end, but the 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 visuals and the story were enough to um, keep me interested, regardless of that. Um, yeah, and I, I would recommend playing it, um, not necessarily on the PS2 um, nowadays because the um, Zone of the Enders HD collection came out for the. PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and um, I would go for the the Xbox 360 version if you've got an Xbox Series X in particular because it's fully backwards compatible and, and um, runs better than ever it's been upscaled and uh, I think it probably takes advantage of um, FPS boost and um, um, HDR I don't know auto HDR I'm not sure about that but I, I have played it on the Series X and it does look very good but so and yeah um, if you want to it's not I don't think it's even available on the, the PS5 um, on PS Plus but if it were, was it would be um, streaming over the internet on the PS3 which always has input lag I don't like it at all for that reason so if um, if you don't have an Xbox Series X, um, then if you've got a PS3 lying around, you could get the HD Vert collection on there. Um, I have heard that um, the version of Zone of the Enders 1 has some issues on 
the HD collection. Um, they they also initially when it was on sale, the Zone of the Ender Two also had problems, but they they voluntarily went back and reprogrammed it and and um, re-released it. Um, and it, now now Zoe Two is really good, but they didn't give um, Zoe One the same attention from what I've heard. I, I only just found that out recently, but. Um, um, it was Digital Foundry that said that, so I believe them. Um, anyway, yeah, that's probably almost all. Let me go uh, zoom ahead to the boss battle. I, I did lose the fight the first time, so I'm not going to show that. Um, but, um, yeah, let's just watch the boss battle. I think this is... Yeah. I think this is the version where I actually win instead of lose, but um, I, it, it has been well over a, a decade at least since I last played these games seriously. I, like I said, I have played it a bit on the Series X, but I didn't um, get too far in it. Uh, I just wanted to see how it ran, um, and I was impressed. But yeah, so I couldn't remember really what to do on this um, boss the first time and I kept trying to close in and, and um, attack it with melee attacks but no you're supposed to keep your distance and um, lock on um, this got a bit same samey because you're just constantly firing off lasers at this guy until he um, explodes uh, that this is phase two of the fight where you, you can see his little evil head poking out but um, yeah, it's um, like I say, if you've never played it and you're a fan of other Hideo K K Kojima games, then um, it's worth playing through one time. And um, at any rate, both the games are. There was there was also a um, sort of spin-off game on the um, Game Boy Advance um, called Something from Mar of Mars. It's um, that was more of a turn-based tactics game. It was nothing like this, really, but it was set in the same world as um, the other Zone of the Enders games. Um, yeah, so this is coming to the end, end of the, vi the video now. I'll, I'll um, just keep playing the video till I've beaten this boss, but I'm going to start um, signing off now. So. There'll be a part two to this where I'm just playing through the um, um, videos that are also on the disc, um, which will probably end up being roughly the same length as this by the time it's done. So I'll be back with that and I'll talk over those. Um, we'll see what um, games were about to come out on the PS2 at the time. Um, and um, I'm probably going to do a similar version of this for the official Xbox magazine discs um, but uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this and when and if it's an improvement over what I tried to do years ago um, when I was playing them live I think it is much better than that um, I can um, yeah I don't waffle on as much because I can actually think about what I'm saying I don't, don't, I'm not actually playing the game and um, I can skip through and ahead and backwards and forwards throughout the, the video and it is still me playing because I recorded it um, but um, so yeah um, I am quite reasonably pleased with how this is, has gone for a first sort of experiment so um, and of course another benefit <coughs> of doing it this way is it's actually less co time consuming playing the games is I can do that at my own pace and just record what I'm playing and it's quite good fun. And then um, all I need to do is, is drop the video into this template, um, make sure it fits the, um, the the monitor window there, and then just drop it into OBS and, and uh, talk over it like I'm doing now. So yeah, it's actually quite easy to do. Um, yeah, so that's the end of that. Uh, that demo and the end of part one. So yeah, I'll, I'll say thank you for watching and I'll 
see you on the next part for the videos. Um, and in the meantime, take care.